I'm going to show you quickly how to make a DT graph given some data and then we're just going to go over the shape of all the DT graphs. So when I say DT graph, I mean it could, it's general again, it could be a distance time graph, it could be a displacement time graph. You might as well just assume everything's displacement time because if you do it as a displacement time, you get it right all the time. If you do it as a distance time, you could possibly get it wrong. So here's what we're going to do. The motion of the dog is running after a rabbit and we don't have a direction in our little statement here. We could say it's moving, you know, it's running to the right. That's why I've put all my positives down. So you're given your table of information. This is your data table. I've told you time is going to be in seconds. So on your actual distance time axis or your DT axis, time is always along the X and it's in seconds. And your displacement, which is the dog running, is going to be in a positive direction and it's measured in meters. Okay, if the dog was, if you were told that this was all a negative, you would actually extend this below, and you'd write everything down here, and your whole graph would be flipped over. But because everything's positive, we're going on the positive side. Now we need to choose a correct scale. It's nice. The scale in time is always picked for you very nicely. It goes from zero to eighty. Use a ruler and try to get uh, a scale that's going to count off nicely. So I'm, I'm going to try to get to eighty. Maybe I'll try to go up by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I just don't even have close to enough space to get up to 80. So I'm going to go up by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Awesome. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Write those in. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Now what you want to do is you want to go up the vertical axis and you want to get your displacements and you want to max out at 15 and you want to go from 0 to 15 so I'm going to try to go up by 5's on this axis so if I go 5, 10, 15 it gets me right to here that's not very much so I'm going to go every second I'm going to 5, 10, 15 perfect 5, 10, 15 great so 5, 10 and 15 meters there now I have my data tables don't forget you need to have a title you will lose a mark if you don't have a title of what your graph is for. It is a dog chasing a rabbit. Now what we want to do, we want to put points down. We're going to do this the Francis way, which means we're putting big dots. Okay, zero, zero is my first dot. Next dot is going to be 20, and it goes up 3. So that's around here somewhere. Some people will put a tiny little dot. That means you have to be very accurate. Me. I'll put a nice big dot. That means I have to be less accurate. I want to go 40 and 7, so a nice big dot about there. I want to go 60 and 10, well that's there. And then I want to go 80 and 13, well that's there. Next thing you want to do after you have your dots is you want to draw something called the line of best fit, which is the line that kind of best represents your data. I'm going to think that it looks something like this. There. That's about my line of best fit. Now, what I've done is I've showed you taking a data table, putting it onto a graph, and now what you can do is you can figure out certain things about where the dog is at certain times. So if you wanted to know how far the dog was at 70 seconds, you would map your way up using a ruler, which I'm not doing, so map your way up to there, and then you come across to here, and that's approximately where your animal is, your dog is, at 70 seconds. Okay? So, let's now look at some general shapes. So I'm going to get rid of this, and what I've drawn here is a big distance time graph. I'm going to start with my positives here and then you'll notice that I can put my negatives on here as well. You know what maybe I'll do is I'll, I'll actually move outward here so that you can see the whole thing at one time. There, perfect. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Some DT graph with shapes. Let's start off with constant velocity. A constant velocity on a DT graph 
if you're going to have positive constant velocity, what that means is your car or object, whatever, is not going to change how fast it's going. So I'm going to take my ruler, and if I draw a line with my ruler, like that, that is constant velocity. And because it's in the positive direction, it's going towards the positive direction, you'd call that positive constant velocity. I could <clears throat> show you faster constant velocity, and that would be a line that just slopes a little bit more. So let's do a different color, just to show you that. So let's see here, there. Straight line. That's just faster positive constant velocity. This one's not starting from your starting point. This thing here is called your point of reference. So if we said John Taylor is our point of reference, well, you're driving at a really fast positive velocity from John Taylor. And we'd have to give a direction for which way John Taylor is uh, or positive from John Taylor. So let's say that's towards the direction of Polo Park. This person is not starting at John Taylor, they're starting just a little bit more. So maybe they're at the bus stop between uh, John Taylor and the direction of Polo Park. And then they drive off towards Polo Park, but they do it at a much slower constant velocity. You can show the same thing in the negatives. If I was to draw, let's see here, let's draw a really, really, really slow negative velocity. It's going in the negative direction. That means it started at John Taylor, but it's going like left or right or whatever. Or no, it's going left specifically. So it's going towards uh, outside of the city, so towards the perimeter. So this is negative constant velocity. Okay. If we wanted to show that the object was stopped. I got lots of room down here, so I'm going to show a stopped down here. So this object here is not moving. It's at whatever this negative displacement is, and it's staying at that negative displacement. That is stopped or not moving. Stopped there. I could also show you what positive acceleration looks like. On a DT graph, acceleration is curved. So let's take from here, let's say that your car starts left of John Taylor, and we draw a curved line like this. That indicates positive acceleration. That's positive acceleration. How do you know it's positive? Throw your ruler down, and look, every point that is a straight line of your ruler is always increasing in steepness, which means its speed is increasing, which means positive velocity, or positive increasing velocity, sorry, so that's positive acceleration. By the same note, what I want to do is I want to have, for something that's slowing down, I want to have its, my ruler should start like this, and it should slowly end up going to stopped. So I want to have a shape that does this. So I'll start where I have some space, and let's curve it this way. That's negative acceleration, or deceleration, whatever you'd like to call it. That's negative acceleration. There. There's more shapes that we could try to figure out, but that's already getting kind of messy. There you go.